a secondary caries and what more there is also a risk of uh, tooth crack. Of course we as a dentist has a sev have uh, several techniques to uh, decrease that um, uh, so we can simply use uh, appropriate filling techniques like layering, layering technique, double density technique or the sandwich technique or, or inserts. These techniques cause that, that shrinkage so as a result that gap is simply smaller. Uh, now a few words about the composites. I've already told you that these are the materials that are mm, commonly used nowadays. Why? Um, well, the picture that you have here on the right picture, you have an amalgam, on the left you have a composite, is a little bit an answer to that question. First of all, uh, composites are um, aesthetic materials, and this is why nowadays patients and de dentists decide to use that kind of a material, but not only. In dentistry, there is a tendency not to um, remove a lot of tooth structure during the preparation, and composite, composites actually um, are a kind of a material that we don't really have to drill a lot. Uh, in the same case, it is easy to repair them, and what is very important, it um, they bonds to the tooth structure chemically, so uh, the strength of the of the restoration is higher. But the main disadvantage is the the um, shrinkage. So this is what we tried to to measure. So as I told you, we want to assess the shrinkage. On the other hand, our friends from the University of Technology wanted to assess the developed algorithm for the automatic, our automated finding of the dental filling and the gap between the material and the tooth uh, tissues. Our work as dentist was to prepare um, the um, teeth. We prepared 18 teeth. Those teeth were extracted, of course. Uh, we prepared um, um, class one cavity, this is a boxed shaped uh, cavity and the dimensions of the cavity in each case were the same. We work with the molars and premolars. So how the procedure looks like, first after the tooth is preparated we need to etch um, the tooth um, surface so we use an etching gel, we etch for the 15 seconds, then we need to rinse um, the cavity dry it, then we use a kind of a glue, let's say it. it's called bond. In our case it was OptiBond and we apply it to the cavity and cure that for 20 seconds. And then of course we uh, apply the filling material. Uh, in our study each material was put into um, layers despite the bulk filler material. This material is put in one layer and this is due to the producer. And then we polished our fillings and um, half of the teeth were polished just immediately after the filling was uh, done and the rest of them was polished after one day storage in water. Here is what we used, so th uh, the etching gel, the bonding material and the syringes with the composite. And here is again the procedure, so you can see the box-shaped class 1 cavity, then you can see the application of the etching gel, application of the bond system, and then the ready filling. Now let me show you the picture that we took. So after we filled the uh, tooth, we use a dye um, to make the line which is the which is the board uh, between the filling and the tooth structure visible? And then we took a picture using a dental microscope, Zoomax, um, with the magnification of 20. And then the tooth. This is the dye material. It's methylene blue, very common in dentistry and very popular, especially in endodontics. Then those two of those pictures we sent to our friends to the um, Institute of Mathematics. And what she did, she first uh, converted those pictures into the grayscale just for a standardization, and then the um, images RGB color mode turned to the grayscale and calculate the number of pixels in outline area and uh, area of filling. So the outline of the filling was marked with red. This is the gap that we as a dentist are the most interested in, and the um, filling was marked with the green color. 
Uh, here you can see the results. You can see the percentage of the, the radio, uh, ratio of the gap to the whole tooth, to the, uh, of the filling to the whole tooth, and of the gap to the uh, filling. And what is very important for us as a dentist, so the research proved that if the teeth are polished immediately after the filling is put, the gap is smaller. So if the gap is smaller, it means that the shrinkage of the material is uh, smaller as well. And here the results are presented in the form of the diagram. Our conclusion. So for us as a dentist, the most important thing is that the water may have an effect on polymerization shrinkage. Very important because we need to remember that oral cavity is a wet and warm environment, so we need to take that uh, into consideration in our work. Uh, for our friends from the University of Technology, it was very important that the pixel verification methods that they use are not only uh, can not only be used in informatics, but may be also a good choice for mm, medicine. Thanks a lot. So, do we have any questions or suggestions to our presentation? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so the next presenter will be. Uh, the use of an artificial neural network for C uh, bottom modeling and Martin's presenting. <coughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Marta Wodarczyk Sielicka. Uh, I work at Maritime University of Szczecin. I, I would like to introduce you our research, the use of an artificial neural network for sea bottom modeling. And at the beginning, a little bit about navigation and bathymetry. The navigation map is the basic source of information for the navigator. Uh, the main component of, uh, that has connection with the safety of navigation is information about the depth of the area. <laughs> Generally, surface modeling is focused on numerical methods. <laughs> so, uh, previously, pr previously uh, there was always too little data, and now we have a problem with uh, that. That uh, data sets are very large. It's our problem. Data are collected in the sets of even millions points by using a new remote sensing technology like LIDAR system, like photogrammetry system, like uh, uh, radar interferometric system, uh, and of course, multi beam echo sanders, as we can see. Uh, so, raw bathymetric data are extreme, extremely large data sets, and they need processing methods to be transformed into a form that can be used by normal computer. Of course, in a way to keep its initial precision. Even for numerical methods used in surface creation, such big data sets are problems in their processing. It is obvious that this problem could be solved by data reduction, where some minimum number of points would be enough for surface reconstruction, but by application of neural networks, this problem could be solved in another way. By properly adjusting the structure can be redu uh, reduced 
uh, number of the elements, like number of layers or number of neurons. In that way, smaller sets of data which represents neural network structure could replace the bigger, bigger data sets of measurement points. And another approach, the second one, may consist in the reduction of number of measuring points. So we used the radial network, uh, multilayer perceptron, and self-organizing network in our research. A ra radial network consists of three layers, one input, uh, one hidden layer, and one output layer. Multilayer perceptron, uh, besides one input and an output layer, can have mm, many mm, hidden layers, but uh, on this research, is, uh, also one hidden layer is enough for surface modeling, for sea bottom modeling. So we use single layer perceptron in this research. Uh, when number of hidden neurons is equal to number of training data, network can be used as interpolator. And by decreasing number of hidden neurons, neuro, uh, network is an approximator. Similar situation is in the case of multilayer perceptron, where number of hidden neurons decides on error of surface uh, approximation. And in the case of large data of bathymetric point, the Cohonen network may be used during the reduction. And test surfaces. I, uh, the experiment was based on three surface types, which can represent various forms of the real surface, real sea bottom, as we can see. Various shapes of uh, surfaces allow assessing this uh, method for various degree of uh, surface curvature, cu curvature, yes. And the, uh, in the first part of the experiment, uh, four data sets uh, were used. In general, there are two types of special distribution of data points, scattered and regular. And they additionally also differ uh, in the number of points. In an, and in the second uh, part, in the part of reduction, we used scattered data sets, and it contains uh, 200,000 data points. And the experiment was performed on mathematical test function, of course, the aim of first part of the experiment was to study influence of hidden neuron reduction on surfer, uh, surface sorry, approximation error. And in the last step of the experiment, the use of the self-organizing network for reduction and clustering of special data is presented. Uh, and uh, the results, experiment with radial network was conducted for two cases. In the first, the number of neurons in hidden layer was equal number of input data. And the next case was performed for hidden neurons reductions. Uh, the initial value of hidden neuron was equal to number of uh, data points. Analyzing uh, this result, uh, we can state that more reduction neurons is hidden layer increase RMS errors values. For exact solution where number of hidden neurons is the same as number of data points, uh, errors have the smallest value, values. The biggest uh, value are for uh, surface number one and for data sets with less data density. And as we can note, the values of error, uh, errors are rela relatively low for even 60%. It is about 22 centimeters. Uh, for more surface generalization, the tolerance value as a rule is bigger. So can be applied, applied to even reduction on the level of 90%. And uh, single 
layer percept from the same examination that uh, was performed for this network. The initial value of hidden neurons was equal to uh, 50. In the case of uh, test function number two, as we can see, the RMS was almost zero. And uh, due to its sigmoidal shape, Comparing these results to neural reduction in radial basing function networks can be noted that RMS value uh, till from 60 to 80 percent reduction generally have similar values. Beyond these thresholds, uh, thresholds they rapi rapidly increase. In less, uh, and it, it is less influence of surface shape and spatial data distribution. And the next stage of our experiment was to use the artificial neural networks during the reduction of large bathymetric data set. Uh, here was carried out the last uh, data set, uh, the bigger one. The created method of bathymetric geodata reduction is composed of three basic stages and use uh, usage of uh, artificial neural network, network, network sorry, is the second one of the stage. The test data set was reduced for three scales, one to one, uh, 500, one to 1,000, and one to 2,000. So after implementation, all parameters for each of these uh, each scales, we obtained nine data sets uh, after reduction. Uh, surfaces obtained for uh, scale 1 to 500 uh, almost perfectly illustrate the shape of tested area. And for other scales, uh, on, you can uh, see some roughness, uh, which is asso associated with the number of points in the sets, of course. However, they not differ much from the references uh, surface. During the, and the most important, during the usage, uh, usage of created method, more than 97% of points were reduced. In conclusion, neural networks, besides the possibility to create surface model, can also reduce data required for surface reconstruction. This kind of reduction is based on replacement of sample data by neural network structure, which can require less data to be remembered to reconstruct surface. Based on study, it can be stated that the radial basing func function neural network are more flexible in surface reconstruction because they can be used an, as an interpolator as, and, and as extrapolator. Uh, but in the first case, due to exact solution, it's not possible da data reduction. A single layer uh, perceptron can only be used as approximator, but it's more efficient in data reduction. And another approach uh, may be use the networks for clustering, which can be part of the reduction process. Thank you for your attention. So, do we have any questions for our discussion and <coughs> presented topic? We don't have. Okay, so Thank you. the next presenter uh, will be application of ant colony optimization algorithm in modeling the heat transfer in porous aluminium. And Rafa is giving the talk. So at the beginning, let me introduce myself. My name is Rafał Brociek, uh, Silesia University of Technology, Gliwice, Poland. And this is my team, Damian Słota, Mariusz Król, 
Grzegorz Matula and Waldemar Kwaśny. And today I would like to tell you about the application of end colonial optimization algorithm in modeling the heat transfer in porous aluminum. So I've divided my presentation into four parts. First, uh, I formulate the problem. Next, I show you the method of solution. Uh, I present you the experiment, the results of the experiment, and finally, conclusions. So uh, let's start uh, from the formulate the problem. We have two mathematical models of heat conduction. First one uh, based on the fractional derivative of order half, and second based on standard classical derivative. And we would like to compare these two models. These models are differential equations. Uh, where C is the specific heat, rho is the density of the material, uh, lambda is the thermal conductivity, and U is the temperature function depend on the spatial variable X and the time T. Uh, to these models we add an initial condition and boundary conditions, where uh, H is the heat transfer coefficient, Q is the heat flux. Uh, this strange fractional derivative uh, is Caputo fractional derivative. There are uh, several definitions of the fractional derivative, and we used a Caputo fractional derivative in, in, in this model, which is defined by the formula 6. Uh, where this fractional calculus can be applied, uh, this is the examples of application of it, for example, tuning PID controllers, uh, modeling bacterial movements, or modeling uh, heat and mass transfer in porous media. And what about the problem? So we have two models, but we don't have all information in these models. We don't have a heat uh, thermal conductivity coefficient H, and we don't have order of the derivative. We would like to uh, find it. Uh, this uh, coefficient depends on four parameters, A1, A2, A3, and A4. But we have an extra information. This extra information is the sum part of the output of the model. This is the measurements of the temperature. We denoted it, uh, it by UJ dashed. Uh, there is N1 uh, measurements and XP is the location of the thermocouple. And now, when we fix the unknown parameters H and half and solve the direct problem by numerical way, uh, we, would, uh, we can compare these calculated temperatures with the measurements from the real object and build the function 8. By minimizing this function, we get the approximate solution of our problem. We solve the inverse problem. So inverse problem is transformed to optimization problem. Um, the direct problem uh, is solved by the standard procedure like finite difference method with the approximation of this strange fractional Caputo derivative. And the optimization problem is solved by the end colonial optimization algorithm. And now I would like to briefly show you this algorithm, how it works. So let's assume following symbols. F is the minimized function. N is the dimension, number of parameters we would like. In our case, it's four, A1, A2, A3, and A4. Uh, NT is the number of threads because the algorithm uh, is adapted to the multi-thread computation. M is the number of amps. I is the number of iteration. L and L is the number of pheromone spots. So first we set input parameters. Next, uh, generate uh, by random way, by probabilistic way, L pheromone spots, L vectors, solutions. Uh, calculate uh, value of the minimized function for, for these solutions, for these vectors, for these pheromone spots, 
uh, and uh, and uh, sort the set of the solution from the best to worst. Next, uh, for each solution, uh, we assign a probability. If the solution is better, the probability is higher. So the end choose the solution according to the probability by the, this formula. And next, and choose the one of the solution uh, with the probability PL and try to find uh, the better solution in the neighborhood. Trying to transform this old solution to new one, maybe better one. <coughs> Uh, using the, in, in, in my case, Gauss, Gaussian function. We repeat steps uh, five and six for each ant. The number of ants uh, is M. So we get, we obtain M new solutions. Uh, we uh, calculate the value of the minimized function for each new solution. And the M, the worst, solution is removing from the set. And we repeat this process, uh, i times i is the number of iterations. In the end, we get the best solution. And now I would like to show you the re results of the experiment and the stages of the experiment. First, we uh, get collect the temperature measurements of porous aluminum sample. Next, we solve inverse problem apply uh, by applied uh, the end colony optimization algorithm and uh, the third we analyzes the obtained results we compare these two models so uh, how the sample was made the sample was made of uh, aluminum powders next these aluminum powders were pressed in a special hydraulic press uh, and uh, a sample of porous aluminum uh, was heated to the temperature of 573 kelvins and then cooled to the ambient temperature. Uh, we used a uh, special equipment, a special plate hydraulic uh, press and a key type thermocouple. This is the equipment, this is this press. And this is the sample of porous aluminum. Okay, let's go to the numerical example. We, uh, we used following data. Uh, it's about the, the, the material, like uh, specific heat, uh, density, and so on. Uh, I recall you that we, we are looking for two coefficients, H and alpha, and they are dependent on four parameters, A1, A2, A3, and A4. Uh, in, this, in the end colony optimization algorithm, we used following data. A number of uh, spots uh, is equal to 12, number of ants is 16, and number of iteration is 55. And what we get, this is the result. Mm, the second column is about the model with fractional derivative because we want to compare these two models. And the third column is a uh, is model with classical derivative. What is most important in this table? Uh, the value of the minimized function. If the value is smaller, the result is better because this uh, value of minimized function means uh, um, value of the error of approximate solution. So uh, we see that the model with fractional derivative better describe the process of heat conduction in porous media. And uh, in this table, we have the errors of reconstruction temperature uh, in the location where the thermocouple is. And for example, the second row, this uh, maximum absolute error in case of fractional derivative is about 12 kelvins. And in case of classical derivative, is uh, is about 20 Kelvin. So the fractional derivative is is better to describe this process. And uh, let's go to the features. On the left side, the black line is the measurements from the real object. 
the blue line uh, is the calculated values of the temperature modeled by, 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 by the model with fractional derivative. This is case of fractional derivative. On the right side, we have the errors of, of modeling. We can see that the blue line fits very well to the black line. It's, it's good. In case of uh, classical derivative, it's a little bit uh, worse, especially in the end of the process, about the uh, 60 seconds. This is the similar result than the fractional derivative. And let's go to the conclusion. So we compared two models, mathematical models of heat conduction, and the model with the fractional derivative is better in, in this case, of course, uh, than the model with classical derivative. Uh, the errors in case of Caputo fractional derivative is about 3.28%. And in case of classical derivative, it's about approximately 5%. Uh, and end colonial optimization algorithm is really efficient. It's a good, good tool for solving this type of problem, optimization problem, inverse problem. So thank you very much for your attention. So do we have any questions to our presenter about the topic of... Can you tell uh, another application areas for your algorithm? Uh, for this end colony optimization algorithm? It, it could be... Um, implemented in all types of problem where we we don't have an analytical function and we would like to find optimum of this function, optimize this function, find a minimum or maximum of this function, but we don't have analytical formula for it. It's really good, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's easy to implement it. Uh, and for example? For example? I use it uh, in, in, I research about the inverse heat conduction problem. I use it in it, but there is a lot of uh, uh, application of experiments, chemical is possible. Yeah, 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 of course, yeah. In chemical experiments, uh, in some case of uh, mechanical experiments, yeah, yeah, it could be implemented. Any other questions? Okay, so thank you for the thank you. presentation. <laughs> and uh, the next presentation will be Model Driven Architecture Implementation Using Clean Data. Yeah, just one. Yes, okay. Good day, dear colleagues. Let me introduce uh, myself and our uh, presentation. My name is Vyacheslav. Uh, the topic of my presentation, model-driven architecture implementation using linked data. Uh, this is a result of our uh, search and research, which we made with our colleagues from <coughs> Serbia. Uh, uh, in our research, we had deal with uh, uh, creation one of the approaches of MDA technology. Uh, this is a technology of creation software using uh, modeling transformation. And uh, we used uh, presentation uh, of uh, computation independent model in different uh, views of modeling, such as uh, SUSML, VPMN, CMMN, and so on, <coughs> and uh, using uh, logical approach, uh, logical language, log talk, for 
transformation for uh, getting information about modern and transformation this modern. And also we tried to use uh, uh, linked open data sources uh, in the processes of transformation for obtaining additional semantic data for models. Uh, and this approach uh, with using linked open data is uh, helpful for applying um, uh, generated uh, uh, classes and interfaces for uh, communicating with different uh, uh, web agents, web services to access uh, data in databases. Uh, uh, we uh, use uh, 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 cre created uh, UML modeling and transform them to uh, FDA format via XMI representation and describe uh, processes of transformation using uh, knowledge base in uh, uh, log talk uh, language. Uh, so, it's one of the huge questions why we uh, choose log talk because of, uh, there are very few uh, uh, realization of MDI approaches with using uh, logical uh, programming languages. Uh, we used uh, uh, LogTalk because it uh, uh, is widely known from log language syntaxes and its uh, runtime language. It's uh, implemented as macro package and it uh, has very flexible uh, semantics. We used uh, semantic web technologies uh, in representation of uh, models uh, during transformation. Uh, such we simulate experience for, of domain basic researches tending to standardization and uh, we use uh, regular sets of triples denote in uh, graphs of uh, when we build an RDF document. And uh, these uh, triples presented in uh, T-box, multiple box, and A-box. We used uh, standard uh, vocabularies or classifiers for um, determining um, objects. And we uh, used uh, 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 different uh, libraries and Sparkle queries for models. Uh, we uh, also um, present our models in RDF document because this format uh, has a way for global element uh, identification in world project, in world uh, models, model, sorry, uh, and uh, we can refer to say uh, one object from the different parts of uh, class. And uh, uh, usage uh, of SVI Prolog uh, supports to direct uh, queries into RDF graph uh, as well as uh, interpreting some predicates of uh, logical model. Uh, we use uh, queries uh, from our RDF document structure to uh, some ontological uh, server. And currently we use Cleopatra server for storage ontologies. Mm, the query for ontologies provides for uh, different linked open data sources and uh, usage of ontological service, local uh, ontological service, uh, is very important because we uh, very decrease uh, time for uh, generating another 
objects with the same topological nearness. Uh, this is a, uh, a common uh, model of uh, our approach. We have a, a model of uh, uh, computation dependent models. We have a platform independent model presented in UML language, and we uh, transform this to uh, code and data with uh, applying uh, uh, T box and day box uh, meaning from linked open data. As for knowledge base, currently we use DBpedia, but uh, it's uh, not so important because we think that uh, it is possible to use Yago, uh, uh, Yahoo FUI, and so on. Uh, the infrastructure of uh, this approach presented on this slide. Uh, we uh, uh, present an independent uh, computation parent model in uh, RDF format and uh, in our approach we don't uh, mix uh, 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 computation independent model and uh, uh, platform independent model. We try to add uh, uh, information about all this model and uh, uh, create a new model uh, with uh, added uh, information from uh, Link it open data sources. Uh, the architecture of transforming models uh, presented on the slide. Uh, at the start of the process transformation, we should have uh, some description of uh, the computational processes. We should have a model of uh, 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 software presented in. Uh, UML formats, and we should uh, have access to uh, ontologies. And uh, at the end of the transformation, we will have uh, uh, SQL database creation script, uh, business logic source code. It uh, means uh, uh, classes, interfaces, and uh, methods and fields of classes and uh, elements of user interface. Of course, we couldn't uh, uh, get a uh, very uh, complex uh, user interface. It would be simple, but it's generated. Uh, when we mm, analyze the uh, scenario of creation uh, program code, we uh, make uh, queries uh, to the uh, document to create uh, class, class attributes, uh, class methods, and so on. And uh, creation uh, processing according scenario of the transformation. Uh, uh, query object could be implemented. And uh, uh, with uh, uh, usage and idea, uh, which taken in uh, project uh, LV LLVM Lite, we generate uh, code blocks. And uh, code blocks may be added for new instances, new entities uh, during the generation. Uh, uh, by receiving new information data from ontology service, uh, from um, models uh, description. Uh, now th uh, this is uh, this slide uh, uh, interprets uh, creation of code blocks uh, by rendering 
models, by reading models, and get information about attributes, methods, and name of generated classes. And uh, when we uh, queries to, when we made queries to link it open data uh, services, we can extend uh, our description of our object and uh, linked it to uh, describe it uh, in linked open data uh, entities. And uh, uh, one of the main question, why we need a technology if we couldn't apply it. Uh, so we applied, the, applied this uh, approach for creation application. It's, uh, uh, this slide represents a data follow uh, uh, of uh, practical usage in our approach to creation application for next generation sequences analysis of amplicons from uh, 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 genomic researches of uh, Lake Baikal water. So, uh, it's, uh, it was uh, some kind of uh, research and, uh, of search and research, uh, and uh, we have interesting positive impressions that we obtained in this research. Uh, we used uh, LogTalk and RDF, they are flexible sufficiently, a universal and convenient implementation for structures of MDA, uh, and uh, the best implementation means is Prolog Predicate Open uh, LogTalk Objects Encapsulation um, Rules. Uh, not uh, all log talk properties are investigated in these approaches. Uh, it is uh, uh, the point for new researchers. Uh, but we uh, faced with some um, challenges, with some problems in our research. For example, a very simple task to take, uh, uh, very simple task, for example, for convert all ident identifiers for camel case standard uh, takes too much efforts with this logical approach. And it is, uh, takes uh, too long to surf internet uh, in order to find vocabulary for domains, for uh, means of entities. And uh, Prolog is not a popular language as other logical uh, languages in uh, the most of uh, approaches for realization MDA technique. And uh, uh, conclusions, uh, 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 the following results which presented in this presentation have obtained uh, for today. A technique for model presentation has been developed and tested. It's one of uh, version uh, realization of this uh, technique. Uh, a programming technique using object-oriented uh, logical language log talk. Uh, prototypes of various transformation procedures are implemented in this approach. Uh, transformation tools are tested in application areas and uh, steps of uh, further researches is uh, are, um, uh, technique for document automatic markup with vocabulary entities, and uh, transformation implementation techniques uh, minimize the usage of uh, dynamic uh, objects, uh, and uh, form uh, a tool set uh, out uh, of existing prototypes obtained nowadays software developing requirements. Uh, all created methods and uh, libraries are uh, open source, and uh, this is the links, and you can get it. Uh, thank you very much. 
Okay, so uh, discussion or question on the project? Yes, so you have code available for uh, for free. Yes, without yes. Any login, without, without any login, this is a GitHub uh, links and you may uh, download, you may search. Any comments or document uh, or uh, uh, some description? Yes, we have. Because I, yeah, yeah. I, I have a colleague in the United States, yeah. <laughs> and I think maybe for him would be interesting. Can I give this? Uh, uh, yes, sure, uh, you can, and uh, I'll be very appreciative for this. <laughs> uh, we uh, have uh, some uh, documentation. In GitHub. Yes, in GitHub. It presented in. Uh, 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 DocuWiki format, so, and uh, it is on English language, so <laughs> it is it would be understandable for everyone. Okay, another questions. So thank you once again for presentation. Thank you. Uh, I think these are all presentations for today, so. Uh, we are closing the session. Uh, the next each is and also uh, our session will take in October 10 to 12, uh, also in Vilnius, but uh, more in the center. So we can say that we meet in the same company, but uh, in uh, next year and three days, am I calculating right? Things like that. One, one year and a few days and we are meeting again. So thank you and see you uh, in the future.